hell. Hell. I want to talk to you a little bit today about hell. Many people see this word as something funny. You know, people curse. You know, they make fun of the word. You know how to use it. Uh, it's, it's a byword today. A lot of people don't want to <laughs> take it for what it is, where the word came from. That's the scriptures. And the meaning for this word is a place void of God. It is a place that was made for the devil and his angels. It was not made for human beings to go there. You know, we look at that word today and it's, it, it doesn't hold any weight. Um, <clears throat> and the reason being, we live in a world of comfort. We live in a world where, you know, we, we got our favorites. We, we're comfortable. We're, we're comfortable. We can go to our favorite restaurants whenever, basically, we, we want almost here in this country in America. You know, a lot of people, we're doing well. Most of the people here are doing very well off. We can, we, we got our, our favorite rooms in our house. You know, we got our favorite bathroom. We do number two. People, people got all these favorites. You got your favorite blankets. You got your favorite towels. You know, we have really um, every almost all the desires that we want and pleasures that we want. So the idea of a hell seems to be, you know, far-fetched. It seems to be something that is not really real not really true the, the world has downplayed the word but it's a very real place I've experienced this place firsthand at 15 years old I've experienced this place and I'm trying my best to warn people that it's, it, it is no place that you want to be I, I, I've, I've been warning people since I had my experience at 15 when I when I was basically dead for 38 days, I was in a lifeless coma and I saw and I was in this place and seen it. I'm trying to tell people, trying to warn people. And if I could just save one person from going to that place, I feel like I've done my job. Bible talks about people, you know, Jesus told, um, this is it's the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Let me break it down. Um, and the rich man basically wanted, this is a true account now. This is not just stories. These things in the Bible, these stories or parables or not, I don't, I, I don't believe this was a parable. I believe this was a real account of what's happening in hell or what happened in hell in this, this story. The rich man asked Jesus to go tell his brothers and warn his brothers that they should do right so they would not have to go to this place that he was in where he was being tormented. Okay? He was being tormented in whatever place he was in. Where I, where I was, what I saw and what I experienced was desolation. I was by myself. I was by myself and the isolation had a presence. The darkness had a presence. The darkness had a, a presence. And that presence is no hope. Okay? That presence is no hope. That presence is you're about to get what you deserved. You know? It's a presence of you are about to reap what you've sown. Those things that you thought you got away with, the things that you you knew were wrong and you, you did it anyway, the things that you knew were right and you didn't do them. And there, the Bible says it's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth because people know better and they still do wrong. 
even me still. And the Lord is working that out. And the Bible talks about that as well. We have to be renewed by the spirit of our minds. We have to be washed by the word of God. And I'm, I'm going to continually come on here and warn people because people don't get enough of warnings anymore. We are, we live in a, a, a society of pleasure. And if you overindulge in pleasure, certain things are going to start happening to you. You don't realize that, that the flesh, the Bible says we have three enemies, the world, the flesh and the devil. And they all try to deceive you. We eat foods that taste good, but most of the times they're bad for us. The devil, he comes to steal the word of God. When it's sown, he comes to take that word from you. He makes the word an offense to you so you can continue in sin. And it's all a lie. It's all for him to deceive you into a place that he know he's going. And this stuff is not no, it's not fictional. It's not made up. This is real. Yes, you can't physically see the devil. You can't physically see God. You can't physically see air. But all of them are real. We have a real enemy in the devil and ourselves. We are our own enemies. Diabetes, people can eat their way into certain sicknesses. And people can drink their way into certain diseases. So you can't tell me we are our own enemies. It's a lot of things that we have to look at, start looking at in our lives, cleaning up in our lives. We, it's time to repent. It's time to get right with God. This is a new year. It's time to get these things together and see what God wants you to do. We have to live by his will, not our own will. And what that means is we have to read that Bible. We have to go fellowship with people who know more than us to help guide us into the proper way we ought to be living. That way of living is holiness. That's the way. The Bible talks about how few people are going to find the way. It said broad is the gate that leads to destruction. Many there be that go that way. Now is the way that leads to life. And it's going to be few people that find it because we get caught up in the things that we desire, the things that bring pleasure, the things that brings comfort. But we got to cut it out. If that's drinking for you, if that's overeating for you, if that's being uh, having sex outside of marriage, if that's having a, a wrong sex, you know, same sex marriage. That's wrong. If it's pedophilia, anything, anything that the Bible, we know what right and wrong is. The Lord has wrote these things on our hearts. We know what right and wrong is. Some of us have has burnt. We've seared our conscience with the hot iron. And we're able to do things that we shouldn't be doing. That's why you have serial killers. That's why you have serial rapists. And, and all these other things because people have seared their minds meaning they have put a stamp on it it's burnt they don't even feel anything from doing wrong to people anymore um, I hope you guys understand ladies and gentlemen I hope you understand that hell is a real place that we have to do what the Lord has required us to do to be saved and it's not hard, man. And he helps you every step of the way when you get in it. He gives you the power to overcome, but you got to want it. You got to want it. He gives you salvation. He gives you a changed mind, a changed heart, but you have to want it. You have, a, you have to have a contrite or a broken spirit. Your spirit has to be broken. You have to be at a place where you don't want to do the those things that offend God anymore and offend yourself and know, come to that place and tell yourself I'm wrong. Don't continue to be self-righteous. I'm not self-righteous. I know I have weaknesses. I know I have places where God needs to lift me up and, and bring me out. And I'm trying to tell y'all, 
you have the same issues, all of us. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and people, they may claim and say that, you know, I'm, I act holier than thou, but I'm not. I'm the total opposite. I'm open telling people that I'm, I'm, I'm weak. That, 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 that I have this flesh that, that desires to do evil. But the only thing keeping me is the Holy Ghost. That's what's keeping me. It's not by my own will or my own power. So that's what I want to tell you guys today. Hell is real. You don't want to go to hell. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And these comforts and these cares of this life, they will blind you. And hell will catch you off, off guard. You're going to close your eyes one day and end up in this place where you can't get out. There's no more hope. Ain't nobody coming to save you. And that place is real. I've experienced it. I've seen it. So please take heed. The Lord Jesus talked about hell more than anybody else in the Bible. Think about this now. God the Lord himself, Jesus came, who is God, and he died on the cross. So the God that created everything came here in human form. Because he loved you that much, loved me that much. He didn't want us to be in this place. He talked about it so much because he wants to warn us how terrible it is. And if God has to come and die for you, so you won't end up in this place. You have to understand when I talk about this place, when I tell you my testimony, it is a place that you don't want to be. Please. And I'm going to tell you something. When you, when you get in the Lord, then when you truly, truly get to know him, it's not anything about uh, fear-based um, religion. It's a warning to people. I feel the love of God. I feel life more abundantly. I, <clears throat> I hurt for people who are lost. I cry for people who are lost because I know what it's going to be. Also know what heaven feels like. I seen it. I experienced it too. And it was beautiful. It was so peaceful. So wonderful. You can feel the love oozing from heaven. A love that you've never experienced. Not from your mama. Not from your daddy. Not from your husband. Not from your wife. Or anybody on this earth can give you. Nobody. Only type of person that can give you that is God, the Lord Jesus. And it's something that you would never forget if you experienced it. And I experienced it. And I still feel it today. That love is something else. And it's going to only be magnified. It's only going to be increased when we get to where he is. And we're, I mean, what is so offensive about the Lord Jesus someone who truly loves you more than anything in this world loves you more than you love yourself think about that he loves you more than you but you don't don't neglect that love I'm telling you don't neglect that love be mindful of that love Be mindful of that love, man. Be mindful of that love. Came and died for you. Rose again. And now is in heaven with all power. And he still loves you. A lot of people take that love for granted and they talk against the Lord. They, 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 come, they t tell them about their problems and what they don't have. And what he hasn't done for them. And they don't realize all that he's already done all we can do all most of the time we do is complain about what we don't have what the lord has taken away but what about what he's giving you what about what he's doing for you right now 
Yes, all of us have lost loved ones. <clears throat> and I, to those who've lost children, that's a hurtful thing. But the Lord knows exactly what's needed. It says all things work together for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. And I believe God knows the right thing. He's seen everything. He knows what will play out in a person's life. Even with babies and everything like that, I believe he knows. He knows exactly what he's doing. We can't hold grudges against an all-knowing, all-loving, all-righteous, all-holy, all-powerful God. He's not going to do anything that's wrong or unjust. And I believe that even when it comes to babies. Yes, it's a sad thing to see a baby suffer, to see kids suffer with cancer. Sad thing. And I don't know the reason, but God does. I know it pulls on the heartstrings of people, probably people with the hardest hearts, and that, that may be a reason. I don't know. But I tell you, the Lord Jesus is real going to continue to talk about him to the day I die. I love him. Do, do I always get it right? No. But I'm asking the Lord to help me. Help me. Help me Help me run, run this race right properly. And we'll never have it all right. We'll never have it all right. We'll never have it all right. It's a continual process until our last day. So when you get in this thing, don't try to run real fast. No, it's a process. And God will help you. And this way, this, this way is more joyful. You have more peace. Who don't want more joy and more peace? More stability in their minds. <laughs> With people committing suicide left and right. People killing themselves from mental distress and worry all these things that this world throws at us the lord is trying to take that burden off of you he's like let me get that i got it for you let me hold that i got it for you but people we have to we can't be stubborn we have to take it to the lord and give it to him please take heed to my words please appreciate you listening